Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Ed, ON6PQ in Belgium. And this is the question that he asks. It's very interesting. He says, well, I bought this antenna in the year eight, uh, 1980. That's 20, almost 22 years ago. Um, and you can see the antenna in this picture with this very neatly trimmed back lawn and the antenna. And in the manual at the time, 1980, they wrote, this vertical antenna is designed for operation on 10, 15, and 20 meters. It's um, high gain uh, 12 AVQ. It is designed to work against earth ground or a radial ground system. Now he works it against an earth ground. He's got, uh, and you can just barely see in the picture, he's got an earth ground that goes straight down. He's got the antenna that sticks up that's uh, almost down to the ground and neatly trimmed grass around it. And of course his coaxial cable is going underground to the antenna. And he says it works fine. The antenna is mounted upon an aluminum tube, and next to the tube, I drove a copper bar into the ground and connected both together. Both have a dimension of three meters, about 10 feet. Normally, I think I am in the groundwater zone with, you know, within about 10 feet. Sure, it depends where you live. Uh, for example, in the desert of Arizona, you are not in groundwater at 10 feet. You may not be in any water everywhere in uh, Arizona. Since years I read the advertising in QST about the 12 AVQ. Today they say that it requires radials. When back 40 years ago, he said you could just throw in a ground rod or throw down a few radials. Just wondering what changed. Um, that there was no need for radials in the year 1980 and today you have to have them. Maybe you can find it out by the High Gain Company. The High Gain Company is part of MFJ and um, he says uh, he the antenna serves him well, always in contact in the uh, ARRL contest. He got 24 different states, the faraway states were Texas and New Mexico. Says I'm not a real DX hunter or an award hunter because that gives stress. And I use this as a hobby, not as a must. Sure, I like it when I can catch some DX, but it is not a must. And I use only the CW mode. 100% I'm active since 1975, the same as me. And uh, so what he wants to know is why was it okay to connect a ground rod just the antenna to a ground rod back uh, in 1980, but it's not okay today. It's an interesting question. What has changed in ham radio in the last uh, 40 years? A lot has changed. The rigs that are out now are all transistor. You don't have to treat them carefully because they have built-in protection circuits. If the SWR is too high, they fold back the power. They didn't necessarily do it back in those days. There were still rigs available with tubes in them and um, good, good radios. And the fact of the matter is that amateur radio perception has changed to where the antenna has become far more important in um, amateur radio discourse than before. The old tube rigs had what are called Pi Network uh, output uh, filter. Um, it is built very much like an antenna tuner and it would operate over a very wide range because the final output circuit of a tube amplifier is rarely 50 ohms. That's quite low. It'd be a much higher impedance. Uh, and we used coax and we used whatever antenna we might like to throw up. Carolina Wyndham, uh, which is about 100 feet long untuned antenna. Um, there was even talk, in fact, an article once in QST about using a Pi network to tune up a set of bed springs. So 
the emphasis was on the radio. What has happened since, since all the radios have kind of blended into one? You know, the 7300's a great little radio, but these radios are competing more on price, they are more commodities, um, they're more standardized. It's like going to a rental car company. You rent a car, it's generic car, the spec, in fact, they very specifically want all their cars to drive alike. So it doesn't matter what model it's in, it's just a car. And you get the car, you get to where you want, you get back. And what you gripe about is not the car, but the price. So they're competing on price. Uh, car rental is a commodity uh, service. Okay. Now, what has changed since uh, people are not building their own radios, they're not even maintaining their own radios? What has changed is the thing that the ham can build, uh, which is the antenna. And hams, uh, I recommend for new generals, the MFJ 2010, which is a 40 and 20 uh, off-center fed dipole that's also good on 10 and 6. There's a new antenna from the ARRL, which is a 40 meter and up uh, in-fed antenna, and it comes as a kit, and it's less than $100. And I have one. I'm going to build it. We'll see if it works. That has a real chance of becoming an alternate to the uh, off-center fed dipole that we now have uh, on the reference station at uh, dcastler.com slash reference. Okay, so what happened with the radials? What happened with the radials was the popularity about 20 years ago of an antenna called the 43-foot vertical. It's a single pole, 43 feet high, which is a tall pole, and it's not a tuned antenna. Um, and it needs radials, lots of them. They want 32 or more radials on that thing of a specific length. And then the thing is so far from resonance that you put the antenna tuner right at the base of the antenna. It's a remote tuner. And uh, it's fed power either through a separate cable or over the coax. Now because you do that, there is no actual transmission line between the antenna and the tuner. So it does not matter how far out of resonance it is because you're talking direct, the reactance in the antenna talks directly to the reactance in the tuner. They're complex conjugates, by the way. But there's no transmission line in between to radiate heat. Uh, so they can be nice antennas. Now these antennas have kind of gone out of vogue. Uh, they never were good on higher frequencies like uh, 15 and 10 meters and so on. They're mostly 80, 40, 20 type uh, antennas. If you put a special loading coil, you could get it on 160. But the word radial really entered the amateur lexicon about that time. And people started to think they had to have radials. And then there has been, ever since then, by the way, a constant argument over how many radials how long should they be, um, and so on. There's a table in the ARRL handbook, I believe, if not in the antenna book, that shows the loss if you have fewer radials. The optimum number of radials is about 120. Nobody can really do that. So um, unless you're a broadcast station, in which case you have to by FCC regulation, um, but 30 radials works almost as good. By the time you get down to 10 radials, you will have dropped a couple dB in terms of transmitting power because you're losing, um, you're losing the antenna strength in the way that's radiated at the ground and needs to reflect. So that's when radials came into being. The very first time I mounted my uh, Butternut HF9B here at uh, my house when we first moved here, what we found was that um, I put in 12 buried, about six inch, 
four to six inch buried uh, bear radials. And I made them all the same length and put them in and thought, man, I had a radial field. Well, as it turns out, what I had was not a radial field, but a ground field. And uh, the antenna worked, but it didn't work real well. Well, after I rebuilt the antenna from scratch, took it all apart, put it all back together, I decided to add some radials on the surface of the ground, and I made them insulated radials. They're all different lengths. There's about 32 radials on the thing, and the performance of that antenna was spectacularly better than just with what was actually a complicated ground system. Ground system is still there, plus there is a ground rod driven at that antenna site location. And uh, I've changed the antenna because it just fell apart. It was flexing so much in the wind. Um, and now I have in its place a step IR, big IR uh, vertical, and it performs exceedingly well. Now, the uh, DX Commander antenna, um, <laughs> which has been a little controversial here, uh, comes with 10-foot radials, but a lot of them. And when we put the antenna up for testing, it received as well as my step IR, big IR. Okay, and since antennas are fairly reciprocal, we can be pretty sure that it would transmit as well. The length of radials is not terribly, is not terribly important if they're on the ground. Um, if they are in the air, you do need to tune them. They have to be a quarter wavelength at whatever frequency you got. You normally have two or three radials for each band tuned to a half uh, wavelength. You can use uh, the 40 ones for 15. So there's kind of a little bit of background about the radials. Radial history, uh, if you want to know. They have become the thing and uh, all uh, vertical antennas that are quarter wave monopole, uh, monopoles or multiple wave antennas with traps and stuff need radials. So there's a whole class of vertical antennas that does not need radials because they're actually in-fed half waves. Okay, and a half wave antenna, just like a dipole, doesn't need radials. Would radials help that antenna? They might. They might by a little bit. A radial field underneath a dipole will help the dipole a titch. So there you have it, all about radials. If you would like to help support this channel, uh, I'd be delighted if you would. Please go to decastlercom slash support and look for ways that work for you. Until we next week, until we next meet, 73.